Right, next thing to do is renew the diaphragm. If it's split, holes in it, or just gone, you want to change it now for a new Exmoor trim diaphragm. So the way to do that is the hook I described earlier on. A cur curtain hanger will do if you bend it into a hook, but be careful you don't catch your hands with it. So all we do, under the clips, pull and release. Best to do one side first, it makes life easier. The back one's a little bit fiddly. With your new diaphragm, you'll notice that the sides are the same, but we have two extra clips on the front. What you'll need to do is get a four mil drill and you'll have to drill the frames. Firstly, put the diaphragm down one side, put your clips in, okay, go to the opposite side now. Best to do the back one first because that's the most awkward. So, nice pull into the hole and again if you're using a coat hanger make sure that the wire doesn't bend and slip out and catch your hands. The two front ones, you'll notice that I've drilled the frame already. All you do is make sure your hooks are straight, get a marker and mark the frame, centre pop the centres so your drill doesn't slip off, four mil drill, drill the hole and then it's ready to take your clips. Second one in place, that's your diaphragm fitted. Right, with your replacement seat back cover, you need to turn it inside out about three quarters of the way up, so we've just got the headrest piece to go. So the way to do it, hand inside the cover, roughly about where the bottom of the headrest is fixed, use your hand, make a crease and turn it inside out. Just pull it gently, one side, same on the other. Make sure you have the cover the right way round, so the single flap goes to the back, the double flap is the front. So all we do then is get your cover, put it onto the top of the seat and just wriggle it into place. Push your cover down so you can see the top of the headrest. You'll notice on the top of the seat there are two holes in the cover and these need to be put in place over the headrest holes. Just wiggle them round nice and gently, don't try and pull them because they're ripped. Make sure that they're tucked under the flange and that's ready. So you can then drop the seat back down, nice and forward on the bench. We need to get to the first flap ready for fixing. If you pull the phone back you can see the metal bar there. Tuck your cable tie in so it loops around the bar just pull through. Leave the, do all three. Now all we do now is feed one through the hole, through the cable tie. Don't pull it tight yet. Do all three first. All you want to do is tuck that down to the bar. Get your cable tie, pull it nice and tight. And then you can do the left or the right, whichever suits you first. Nice and tight. Okay. Just trim them off. Turn the actual lugs of the cable ties into the back. That way they won't poke through. And there's no sharp edges. That's the top fix in. Okay, next thing to do is stand the seat back up. And what you want to do now is ease the cover down part way. Both sides taking care is to leave enough there to poke the bungee cords through. Now with our little homemade hook we need to bring these bungee cords back through these sleeves on the cover. Feed through so it comes out the bottom, get your bungee cord, hook your bungee cord onto your homemade hook and we have to feed this through the cover and it's a little bit fiddly because it tends to catch so you just have to Take your time, wiggle it, a little twist helps come through. Pull right through till you get the hook and then leave that in the top of the loop on the cover.
and that will stay in place. Feed the cover on, so far enough down so that we can then hog ring this back onto the back of the flex ladder, the back of the seat. Just ease it down both sides. Nicely there. Take your care, just adjust the material as you go, wiggle it into place, making sure that all the salvage is the right way. So feed that through, back of the flex ladder, much as you did with the front. Don't pull it tight yet. With your side snips, just cut the cable ties off, nice and short. That's the back in place. You don't have to turn these because they won't poke into anything. Next thing we want to do is your bungee cords now, which are still where we left them. We need to relocate back on the hooks at the base of the back. Now when, when you grab the hook, be careful not to let go as it can sometimes ping back through and you'll have to start all over again. So carefully grab it, feed it through, push the foam back with the hook back in the loop in the back of the foam. Pull the foam back, that hook, into the loop. And that's that in place. Now what I suggest you do on this bottom one is the two end ones are okay. The centre one we won't use. We'll make two small holes, one either side, that matches up the recesses in the foam. So with your braddle, just line it up so that it's roughly the same both sides. See where you're going to put your cable tie with your flap. Just a nice little hole through, just big enough for your cable tie. You need to do the two centre ones. When you fed your cable ties through, notice how I've done that with the actual retaining lug to the bottom of the seat. Do the same on all four. The reason we do this is it's easy just to poke that end through the hole. Pull your cover down, roughly hold it in place with one with your left hand or right hand, whichever. Pull that one tight. Do the one on the outside. Next inner one. And then the last outer one. Just push those round so they don't dig in your back when you're sitting in your seat. Then we stand the seat back up. And we're going to ease the rest of the cover on now, taking care that when we go over this handle shaft. Okay, so if you ease it down a small piece at a time, up to the shaft, same the other side. Don't rush it, otherwise you'll end up ripping it. That will then fold over the shaft. If it doesn't, just get your hand under and lift it over and then just ease it down a bit. 